So April is the month of being patient. back the tarp magic but like okay for comparison for comparison okay this and this that is the power of a tarp this is how it's going I have put the cardboard around it to reduce the amount of weeds but there's still a lot to be desired but hey look at these when I planted these I think they were about this high they've grown already that much like this is fantastic this is fabulous okay quick update over here I have removed this black tarp and we have slid it over here here's the thing about being on a farm is you're only as good as your mechanical devices. So right now, my husband is preparing to plow this entire area. However, he is missing a pin from his tractor, so he has to go and get that repaired. And of course, this last weekend was Easter weekend. And when did he have time to bring stuff in? It was Easter weekend. He tried to bring it in. Of course, they're closed. So, welcome to being a farmer. Your machinery hinges on literally a pin. So right now, we're sort of in this weird limbo of we haven't done anything yet. So here's my reading update. Um, I'm in the middle of a, a bajillion books. That's my update. I am on hold for so many books right now and I keep getting like the, the skip the line keeps popping up and so I read it until it's due and then I have to give it back and have to read something else while I'm waiting for it again. So that one currently is The Will of the Many. I'm not very far in and I am really enjoying it so far but it's so difficult to try and read it in seven days. This is like a gigantic book, maybe 500 pages. So I'm struggling to get those 500 pages read in a week, but we're doing it. Um, at the beginning of the month, I ended up taking out the Hopkins manuscript because I just was too impatient. I wanted to read something that I knew was a guaranteed good, and it was. It was a five stars. I absolutely loved it. It was all the things that I love in the end of the world. It reminded me of the day of the Triffids, life as we knew it. It reminded me of any of those like climactic end of the world books. It reminded me of that a little bleak in loneliness and predictability of humans, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. The main character could be said he's unlikable. He's pretty much a snob and he just like sees the world very filtered, very biased. And I just really enjoyed myself reading this one. Has been tilled. 
This is exciting. This means we can start mapping out all of the beds and we can start planting. I don't know if you can hear, but it's pretty stormy outside right now. This was the eclipse day. This was our weather. <laughs> Happy Eclipse Day! Now that we have everything tilled, I have been flagging the beds. So, ultimately, the main pattern is going to be a one foot wide bed for sweet peas all the way down. We're about halfway through. It's a very windy day. So one foot wide bed all the way down for sweet peas. Two foot space and then four by ten beds. So we have an example four by ten all the way to the middle and then a four foot space and then another four by ten bed. So here. So essentially in each quadrant that I have set up there are six four by ten beds and a sweet pea bed and this seems to be the most logical bed size in my opinion just in terms of mathematics and spacing for all of the seeds it's just a lot easier to figure the seed spacing out um, I got that tip actually from Erin's book that I showed you a while back she gave some tips and tricks and I hope this is going to work out because I really like the idea of having this size bed because you can essentially have a, an aisle on this side and an aisle on this side and you can basically work in and it's not, you're not reaching in too far. It's basically, you can access things a lot more easily. So this is what I've been doing this morning and of course it's the greenhouse so it's rather warm but mostly it's the humidity, which we love, we want that, but it's really hard to work in. <laughs> can only find two sweet pea blends. Uh, I think I'd have to look into more specialty ones to find different kinds. So I, I can only find the Old Spice blend and the Royal Family blend. Both are quite purple. But then I found this one, Robert Bolton and Son from Essex. Oh my goodness. Okay. And this is the Sweet Pea Gaiety Apple Blossom. So I'm wondering if these are going to be a beautiful light pink. That's what I'm hoping. Um, some of these did germinate. They are quite old, but of my seedlings that I just planted, probably about half of them germinated and really surprised me. So I am looking forward to seeing these pop up in the next few days. Oh, we 
are beginning to harden off these plants. So these are all of the peppers. I'm doing quite well. Like I'm quite pleased with where we're at. I do have a couple of um, casualties here, but like, look at these ones. These ones are looking so great. I'm gonna have to pot them up pretty soon. And then these ones, these are the cucumbers. Well, okay, that's a marigold. These are cucumbers. This one was an experiment that I put in the greenhouse and it got sun scorched because lo and behold, you have to harden off plants, which means they're going from a light that's a low intensity to sun, which is high intensity. And this is what happens. They get nice and crispy, but I'm hoping it'll survive. I've got these white containers are the big long cucumbers and then all of the other ones are pickling cucumbers. Nice short ones. Love me some pickles. Beryllium update. We are eight days away from the end. I have several books on the go. I just finished today The Will of the Many. Five stars, by the way. My prediction bingo, I got 14 out of my 16 squares filled out and predicted. Ah, there were some that I could fudge, but I didn't want to. That was what was really cool about this book was that my predictions, it was like a classic, kind of, for example, creature companion. There was a creature that was kind of a companion, but there was a twist on it. So I counted it as a creature companion. Some people may argue otherwise. I am in the middle of secluded cabin sleep six and it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. It's messy. I started the book of love it is very slow and I have this feeling that it's just going to be slow the whole way. Like it's a character exploration. It's, I don't want to say it's plotting. It's, oh, it's what, it's what the kids say. All vibes, no plot. So far, at least it's 630 pages. So like at least it's got to say something. Alternatively, if the book of love falls flat for me, I was going to listen to the berry pickers because the berry pickers has berries on the front, which are circles. And I started it. I had a skip the line, you know, like a fast read and I had to return it. So this has just been kind of a month of reshuffling scheduling. Both kids sleep schedules are shifting. So that's making it a little bit difficult to figure out where to slot in my reading. That is the life of a mom, just figuring out where I can put in my hobbies. So April seems to be the limbo month, the month where things happened but didn't happen. And I know once we get seeds in the ground, things are just going to go crazy like a jungle. But right now, we're just kind of, just kind of here. So I've got a sprinkler on. I've just trellised the peas, finally. The greenhouse is very dry. Like this dirt, it's very dry. So we're just going to have to get moisture back in. It's not as humid as it was previous to tilling. So that's a downside to tilling. But if I put the sprinklers on and once we start getting some green stuff in here to hold the water a little better, then I think we're going to be back in business for moisture and humidity. I have now DNF'd the Book of Love. It was not great. I got 10% in, which on the audiobook is three hours, three hours into this. And I was just like, this is, this is not interesting. The prose is pretty, but it certainly needed a bit more of a, uh, a sledgehammer to it. Sledge? Sledgehammer. <laughs> but this one was so full of fluff and like 
it had me questioning during these supposedly com- important conversations. Like, do should could, could this have been taken out? <laughs> Would we have lost anything? Would we have gained anything? I just didn't have the patience for it. Finding a new book <clears throat> in the last seven days is a little bit quick, but okay. We'll address the elephant in the room, and that's that I got a haircut. Um, (laughs) I got a haircut, and I'm not especially in love with it. Let's see here. It's, um, it's very short. So I had hair down to here, okay? So it, it's a bit of a change for me, and I'm having to pull it back because I'm not sure I like the style. I like how I've got it now. I like this look. But it took me a bit to figure out how to, to, to look with it. So that's my, my elephant that I didn't bring up in my other two videos because it's, it's a little embarrassing. <laughs> Can I put sunglasses on? No. There we go. That's a little smoother. Let's work on this one. I'm here. It's porch season. I've got the laundry up. Let's do it. Here's something wild that you don't think about with goats is that they are incredibly wasteful. I don't know if you can see this hay. They pull it out and as soon as it touches the ground, they go, "Mm, nope, don't want it. And you'll see the big piles of wastage. Let's see if I can get like a good shot. It just piles around the feeder piles and piles and piles so what we usually use it for is we bring in the big digger and we take it all for compost and I'll show you how much they've wasted in a year you can see so this year we started at this line they have gone up this much since the beginning of the hay feeding year which started around November so they've gone up about a foot last update of april i have begun planting i started watering these because these got really dry look how dry this is so i've watered it soaked now this will be straw flowers straw flowers are fantastic for hanging and drying and they make wonderful everlasting bouquets so i have done five rows but I've only planted two of them because I'm planning on succession planting. So I've done the two rows and then in two weeks, I'll do the last three and the same thing for Nigella, which is also known as love in a mist. I have done two rows of a white that I have. And then these three will be a purple that I have called Persian jewels. I'm so excited. Look at these. These are gorgeous. They are now up to about a foot. This twine uh, is the twine that goes around bales of hay. So when my husband serves the bales of hay to the goats, he cuts the twine and then I get to repurpose it and these poles were an investment they are fantastic so far I've got the plan going down and now I've had to solve the problem of what am I doing for over here because I just realized I'm trellising cucumbers up to the roof and they will cast a shadow this way because the sun rises here sets here this is north so If we had vines growing up here, they're going to cast a shadow on whatever we plant down there. So I am now going to be planting peppers here and then cucumbers over here. And I think we're going to put all of the beans here. I think that is the plan. And I had the aha moment about five minutes ago. So I'm super duper happy. And while I've been doing that, I've been listening to the chestnut man because DNF the book of love and I haven't been getting the berry pickers and the chestnut man was free. There is a circle. It's a little chestnut man. He's a circle. It's a chestnut. He's on the front cover. This is a highly, highly regarded, uh, thriller mystery translated. 
Um, and I am rather enjoying it about 20% of the way through. It is kind of creepy and I kind of love it. This is the exciting thing that has just been installed. I don't know if you can see these zigzags. These are the rollers. You crank this wheel and the sides of the greenhouse roll up so that it is a lot less hot inside, which right now outside it's like 20 degrees inside it's 38 degrees sometimes in the summertime it gets up to 35 degrees outside so i can't imagine how scorching hot it would get in the greenhouse so thankfully we have this now the plan is to put chicken wire all along this outside so that when we open it up even if the goats do get out we don't have a fear that they're going to get in and munch everything. Get this greenhouse rolled up a little bit. It's a little windy. It's been really windy for the last couple of days. This is just going to be my sign off for my April vlog. Um, I've looked into the future and I looked at my, my TBR is full of books that I own which is great however i have this feeling that i am not going to be able to read them oh. so my priority honestly is going to be tyranny of faith and any other ones are just a bonus and i'm just going to explore audiobooks like crazy and i've got a whole bunch of ebooks queued up that i want to read and it may just be the month of whatever i may all right, we'll see you again for another vlog this time next month. I'm going to split my reading and my flower into two vlogs because May is going to be the month of a ton of gardening and planting. So I want to give that some time and I don't want to have these half hour long videos. So expect two vlogs at the end of May. So I thought I was finished all of my footage for April, but I just want to show you this. I don't know if I can see this. If you can see this. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! We've got buds! We've got buds! Yes!